a grand top. Astralis, when they were TSA and World Team, they're always with a thorn in their side. Fnatic fans are not fans of Astralis, but I think a lot of them have converted today for this matchup. They'll be hoping Astralis can get this win, and while Magisk is going to start things off well in the pistol on Inferno, four players towards middle from Astralis. For players, uh, make that three. Your math is a little off. Everyone's dead. Sunny with a double. Alus chimes in with one of his own as well. And Sergey holding the line. Flashbang is perfection. Zepex will fall. Magiska left alone. There was aggression from Astralis, but immediately just stopped in the track. Just punch in the face by Ents. Well, Magis starting to come back up through Banana. He's chasing, but Ents just destroyed them on the pistol front. And Ents have looked good in the pistols. Magisk is going to be caught in the back. Sunny able to pick that up. It's going to be 1-0. to zero. Ends off to a good start. That's exactly what they would like. Four players staying alive. Initially, it was looking good with that first pickup coming in for Astralis in the form of Magisk. But other than that, Ents just uh, steamrolled them. I like the aggression, especially in the pistol round, but one thing you want to have there is, I'm not too sure if they deployed a smoke or a Molotov towards the bottom of Banana, which I don't think they did. Uh, and if they didn't do that, that means that like, you can get uh, pincered, you can get taken down. You just want to like isolate one part of the one part of mid so you can concentrate your your players here. And then taking advantage of that fact, great kills coming in from Mr. Sunny. 3k for him. Almost a flawless round, it just lose aerial. No bombardment of nades by Stralis. They have three towards B. They're using their utility oh. to... Okay. They find Zergen. Alice at 6 HP. That's so much damage being dealt with the utility without having spotted a single player. Wow. Magus caught. And it will be an easy kill there for Ariel as he swings and finds Magics up on top of the car. He's going to be picked off. And we've got ourselves into a 4v4. I've just realized I've called Magus Magics. From Steam Spear. I think we've casted too much CIS Gara Strike over the past few days, but. <laughs> well, Ariel does get the kill. Glyph picked off, and now Zipex is under pressure. But this position should be good for at least one, and that's going to be the bomb. Zipex gets himself back into the B bomb site. Anything more than this is an absolute bonus, and when well, he's going to get that opportunity, the Deagle snapping the neck of Sunny. Another pressure really is on. Zipex just hiding back in new box. The flash buying was nearly in on time. But X7 finds a headshot and turns back to Banana to catch Dupree as well. It's only device left inside of the smoke and we're just two more players to find for him he'll come back and he's spotted and well, not spotted but damage has been done anyway right through the smoke device falling back the reload heard by x7 he's already done so much in this round already well device just holding back now realizes winning the round is completely off the cards but he can certainly certainly make this happen in terms of exit frags we'll see if he can get a kill or two here x7 is just so patiently waiting for it and Ents are doing a good job at not giving it up. Eventually, they'll have to move away, and that's when Device wants to strike. And while there, it's one actually manages to pick off Ariel behind, but X7 confirms himself for 3k, and I'm sure the impact player of the round, and there it is. Well played indeed by uh, by Ents, but looked a little scary. Great job from, uh, from Astralis, just trying to make it work there. The Deagle, Deagle work from, uh, from good old... Zipex, almost making it real, but it was not to be. And now it is going to be the uh, the full eco. Uh, they say full eco, we say Dupree once more with the Zeus. He really wants to go for that. And, uh... Yeah, but this time at least he has a USP. <laughs> I mean, on Yuki, yeah, at least he just wears Zeus that. only. And it's very viable here on Inferno, especially on the CT side. You can get into so many nice positions and really make that work. Mm -hmm. I know that too well. I got Zeus yesterday in matchmaking. It was not fun. <laughs> How do you feel after that? Uh, a little bit red in the face, a little bit mad. But it's going to be Zipex catching Sunny, and that's going to be a Mac 10 picked up. And a kill. Okay. Okay, Zipex. He's uh, he's feeling it here on the B-bomb side. Device. Oh, God. Oh, this is falling to pieces. Alu and Ariel left in a 2v5. Ariel will take down Device. And now with a minute and three seconds left, it's on to Alu and Ariel to try and make this happen. And well, oh, there's Zipex giving up. His position by elevating that opens things up again for Ents. That's uh somehow Alu and Ariel dragging themselves back. That looked disastrous, Dinko. They had a 500 p to 50, but Zipex just being an absolute beast, picking up the double device, of course, catching one as well. Unfortunately, both of them will fall for Astralis, but Alu and Ariel they have everything to work with here. They got the AKs, they got the armor, they even have the little extra utility. 
Now Glaven, but just it's all about timing. They're gonna go for the boost, and the timing could be terrible, but no, they're gonna get up on time. Alu clearing it out, and it's gonna be Magisk and Glaive chiming together to get the kill. All on Ariel, 1v3. Ariel, a lot to do, and he'll make his way on towards the B bomb site. He's trying to get it planted to pre start to swing around, and there's the damage done. Headshot picked up, but Astralis. The first on the board comes off the back of an unlikely pistol win. Supex really starting things off there over towards B. Those are those are huge kills he gets. Finds the Mac 10, peeks into the open. Really good stuff. And Ants will be kicking themselves about losing that round. And you can take a look at the effects on the economy. You can realize how close this has been early on. Because Ants, they lose one and they're right back down to a buy, a low buy of their own. You know, they're forced buying into this. They're getting the deagles around the scout. Alu's job here is to, to hit a few shots, soften them up, allow these pistols to be very potent after one bullet, no matter where you hit them. That's terrible. Just a P250 and the and the five stone investment, and somehow they lose that. And they survived the force buy from Astralis. I've seen this happen quite a few times so far in the road to Rio and various amongst uh, various regions, primarily for the CIS one. As X7 rattling off a couple of bullets, a couple of shots, warning shots through the smoke, and the specs will be force to fall on back. He takes a little bit of damage. Dupree. All getting close. Gets tagged down, but he still gets to kill one HP. And he'll fall on back. He's done his job as a device. He's going to chime in with a couple of his own as well. He's <laughs> having a great time. He sticks around a little too long, and Sergei will take him down on the Deagle. But, uh, play of that with an easy kill. Sergei going to be picked off, and Astralis, well... It's two in a row now for them. They capitalized on their opportunity they have given themselves. And now we take a look at what Ents have brought to the table, and, uh... They're not going to be too generous. They're not going to be bringing much to the party at all. It's just, uh, just turning up, stealing all the free food. Glyph's gun has disappeared. Uh, That's brilliant. There we go. And he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. <laughs> it's kind of glitching out a little bit. Oh, uh, looks fine for me so far, but hopefully that doesn't happen. And like you said, it is going to be a full eco for Ents. So Glock's all around. All five players just running up towards Banana, where I do believe it is going to be an absolute slaughter here. Glaive is going to have a very easy time just mowing down the players. And uh, well, finds four. Looking for more. The Nate should be it if he does tosses it in, but no, Magisk will steal it away. A very, very convincing mob up there just to one casualty and the money is looking real good right now for Astralis as they are back in the lead three to two well Astralis now yes in the lead but ends coming back into things for the purchase they're gonna have these AKs in play Galil actually for X7 he's uh he's always the man to take the hit for the extra utility he's uh He's in an unforgiving role, and I feel like X7 frags a lot for a, a supportive element as well. We've seen him actually hitting a lot of high numbers. Deep smoke coming in yeah. from the CT side. He has been pretty good. He hasn't really looked very solid in Rotorio so far, X7, ever since they did add uh, Jampy. So, Ents, taking Banana. He's affecting Glaive. Playing pretty up close is Glaive. They have a lot of utility to the CT side to... Uh, Keep the T's at bay, but Glaive should be a little careful here. Flashback's gonna pop one out, he spots out a player. Oh! Beautiful shot into Alu. And with that, he'll immediately fade away. I mean, well, an early kill coming in from Astralis, and they'll be happy enough with that. You do bring up a point, though, uh, when you talk about the addition of Yampi, right? That isn't this this match that we're currently watching right now isn't the only competition between Astralis and Ents. The other, the real competition is who can get a bigger roster. No, it's Ents. <laughs> Ents announce a sixth man after Astralis, then Astralis go on, and there, there's rumors they're going to be having seven players in their roster. You know, when does it end? Uh, never. I think the whole of Denmark will be under the Astralis Orc. Uh, here comes the play though towards B. That's all under a thought for the time being. Glaive, he's going to be pushed on out, but Zepex doing great work. Staying alive, he gets a kill as well, and Glaive being pushed out, but doesn't matter. He's still going to get a kill. And Sergei strikes, but Device chimes in to get a kill for his uh, for himself. Saving Zepex as well, he survives in 2 HP. A very good hold coming up from Astralis, which was against the buy. And now ends once more. We'll have to do with uh, with the lack of uh, lack of money. They will have to go for a few upgraded pistols, and it's going to be four to two for Astralis. So ends coming into this P250s Tech Nines. I'm I'm loving the resurgence of the Tech Nine. I'm actually a big fan of seeing it back. And the good thing is, oh god, that's a huge oh, nade no. stack. That's a massacre right there in terms of damage, <laughs> but luckily it is Ouch. only the one kill. 
on towards ends, but that is, uh, that is a plethora of damage right there. And another nade coming in. You know, Ariel hasn't taken much damage on board. Well, you know what? We'll just give him an nade as well. That is just... That's just brutal, right? X1 was blinded as well. Just standing in the flames, completely blinded, naded to oblivion, and burnt alive. I would hate to play against now... this on Inferno. Like, you're just gonna get bombarded <laughs> with nades over and over and over again. Well... Here comes the play, though. Glaive, he hears them. Oh, Molotov. Oh, no. He's got to board a couple of lives. They're going to jump on over. And Al is going to get fried. Dupree and Defy is going to chime in. And it's an absolute slaughter. A full, a, Not a full eco. A few upgraded pistols for Ernst, though. But the Star is going to be happy with that. They've strung five in a row now. And for Ernst, they haven't really found much success apart from the pistol and the following anti-eco. And that's going to be a worrying factor right now. Looking at the scoring department, three kills apiece for each and every one of the players on Ents. It has been kind of quiet so far. Well, at least they're the consistent. coming in, though. That is a positive, <laughs> positive sign. Yeah, but buying coming in, like you said, AKs, though. No AWP. T-side Inferno. Could be difficult to get that AWP going anyway. These AKs might just free them up. But here comes the utility bombardment again. I, I like that they're just not going into Banana. They're just kind of waiting for a little second here. Waiting for Astralis, but... The thing is, Astralis don't just toss the utility willy-nilly, right? They, they always have the informed... Uh, utility usage so they always wait until they've got enough information to make the decision on where they're going to use that utility it's not like they'll just throw it for no reason oh yeah and but but the thing with astralis is like utility usage especially like you mentioned on on inferno is it puts a fear of god in your opponents so sometimes you have banana control without even going for banana control it's like your, your opponents are so terrified and petrified yeah. they're just going to be native to oblivion right but this time though ends up Goes on a small little excursion towards uh, Banana. Find there's no one there close by. Zipex and Glaive once more. Center crossfire. A smoke will be deployed by Zipex. Glaive is that he has the incendiary and the smoke as well. So they have a lot of utility to keep the T's at bay for the time being. But right now, Ents are favoring this A bomb site. Well, they certainly are. They're bringing in the fifth player over as well. They did leave. Sergey over towards B, but now they've pulled him over as well, and all five players congregating in towards the A-bomb side. The stacks of their forces heading this way, and now Matt is going to play with the edge of the smoke. Now, he's probably one of my favorite pit players to watch in this game, and while Sunny is going to catch himself, Glaive trying to make the rotation. Now, Ents looking good. Now, Magis really has to stand tall. He finds the bomb carrier, but with 15 seconds left, there's still plenty of time, but Device is going to be the linchpin. He spots the bomb, running in towards the side. There it is. Device oh. stops it from going down, but still enough time for the plant. Zipex probably not going to win this round. He is going to be off towards a long. God, that was close. Device was just sitting in the smoke, trying to sit there. With the deagle in his hands, nearly gets it done, but luckily Ants recover. They find the important kills, and that's just a little bit unfortunate for Astralis. They just don't win the aim jewels, and Ants just run over the top of him on that A site. The crazy thing is, Device, he was so very patient, and if they hadn't checked that corner, if they hadn't checked the, the motor box, he would have waited for the time to kind of like tick down to like four or five seconds, then he would have got a C4 planter. And with that, despite being perhaps at a mad disadvantage, they're still going to win the round. But ends hold on, and this is going to be the first round in quite a while. X7 scoped in, Zephyx waiting at the edge, she knows where they are, he's going for the hunt, he's going to take away a gun. That's going to hurt the money a little bit, but for Ents, at least they win a buy round, finally, after what's felt like forever. For Astralis, though, the money is ridiculous. It's like the Bank of Abu Dhabi, they can buy whatever they want. They're looking very, very good indeed, money-wise. So, and another important round, another hurdle for Ents to try and clear here. They have got plenty of utility, but there we go. Right back to Astralis, tossing utility straight in towards Banana. They're going to be fighting for it this time. In the last round, they didn't really. They just kind of struck so much fear, like you said, into Ents in that previous round that they kind of elected to just give it up. So, now Sergei in a good position, though. It's going to be holding off and catches Glyph. That's an opening for Ents. A little surprising as well. They should have been aware there could be a player potentially holding that angle instead. Let's take him down. Um, this is something we've seen time and time again, uh, Dinko, with uh, Glaive just going for the aggressive place. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it just doesn't. And this time around, while it doesn't go their way, we have the trade coming in, but a trade is still favoring ends. Sunny 
Pushing in, but device scoped in, going okay. for the fight. He's gonna be caught out, going in the open. Unfortunately, Ariel just pushing up, holding W. He gets the frag bomb, he's gonna get planted. Retake, possible, but not uh, not looking that great for Strauss. And the call has rung out. It is gonna be the save from Majisk and Zipex. And hence, they start to start, this finally start to string a couple of rounds together here. It's gonna be four rounds to the five of Astralis. However, the money is still very solid for the Danes. I feel like uh, the position device placed inside of the A-bomb site, he can do some nutty things from there, but he needs the help from the pit, I think, to have success consistently in that spot. Because if you get overrun from multiple different positions, if there's just too many players coming up short and they all have their attentions turned to you, there's just nothing you can do with that AWP, right? You're just kind of stuck there. That's why having one of the best pit players on the entire planet in there to help you, Magisk, for the majority of rounds it is the right way to go. And it really elevates the performance, I think, of Device in that A-bomb site area with the AWP. Magisk wasn't there in that last round, and we could see how much of a weakness that created with Device under pressure, with those players running up short. There was just too many to, to really target, and there was no assistance from the pit area. So Device struggled. He still gets two kills in the round, but uh, he'll get the AWP back in. It feels like it's, it also comes down to like losing a player earlier on, right? If oh, yeah. they don't lose the uh, glaive early there, they can send a player towards A, and then it makes that whole site much more easier to hold on to. Instead, losing a glaive early on means they have to split the defense. It's going to be usually a 2-2 setup, and that's always going to be tricky indeed. Ends. Starting to wake up, Dinko. Mac 10s though, they're not aware of how good the buy is still from Astralis, and that's going to be the first kill going the way. That's such a nutty angle uh, held by... Dupree, it's really difficult. So you basically you spot a little bit of the player coming into the hallway, but landing that shot as a T player, you go try it at home. You know, you're just not going to get that angle too often. So Dupree really playing with that little pixel angle, taking the kill and falling off. It's a really good job. Especially because he's elevated on the railing as well. So that makes the crosshair mm -hmm. offset slightly. If you want to get that initial headshot, you've got to walk around the corner aiming two players high, and that just isn't going to happen. Oh, indeed. It's, it's one of those angles where if you play it right, if you keep varying it a little bit here and there, you can multiple times get a kill and fall away. Play coming in towards Archway. It's going to be just push back. We're still going to hold the line. Goes for the spray. Just finds one. Sunny with a quick trade. Still man advantage maintained by Astralis. But it is going to be the B hit coming on. There's actually a draw of the rotation thing. We see Zipex with CD spawn heading towards oh, A Glaive. and one lone soldier towards the B bomb set. It is Glaive all by his lonesome. Well, device might just get this kill on the Sunny and that is in fact the Fry. Once they see nothing else here, they, they basically the answer left now. They have to run into B immediately. There's not much time left. They have to go for this. Well, the rotation has come back in. Zipex has arrived, but Glaive at the back of the bomb site is still causing problems. He'll move through. Denies the bomb from Sif. Lee passing on towards the site. He does it all. Last two kills coming in. It's Astralis with six. And that is a big round from Glaive at the back of the site. He'll be happy with that. Just patiently waiting. He is the anchor, of course. And Zipex makes the rotation over. Glaive. Steadily just sits back and Astralis with another round ends coming back into it with a buy I think you, you hit the nail on the head there as well I think they killed a little bit of a mystery They didn't realize how much money Astralis actually had in the bank and it's still not stopping. <laughs> Look at the money It is uh, ludicrous and especially when you win five in a row while barely losing any members That's exactly what's gonna happen the five rounds that Astralis have won In fact all the six rounds have won so far the bomb never got planted and Sunny despite being blinded It still gets a kill with fast trades taking place Ooh. Oh, Zipex spots a player around here. up close, but still spins around and gets the kill on Sergei. That's huge. It was a 4v4, in which case you would kind of favor the T side, because obviously it's going to take time for the rotations to take place, because it is Inferno, it's not new. But Device pushing up, this is very risky, but it still makes it count. He gets the kill. Smoke, deployed, looking for more. He spotted Alu, though. But now, 2v4, looking very, very good indeed for Astralis, and Device not falling back anytime soon. Alu misses the shot, and Device still running around. This guy's a madman. Alu coming back in. A minute left on the clock. Glaive just hiding in the cubby corner. Two players still here over towards B for Astralis. It's not going to be easy no matter where ends go. 
Uh, certainly not easy in towards this B site with Zipex up on the boost, Magis just baiting. Gonna actually lose his head immediately, but surely they do not expect this boost. We never really see players check this for some reason. It's gonna be Zipex with that easy kill, Alu is gonna fall. And especially because, you know, they've already killed that CT player. In your head, you, you're already thinking, okay, we've toppled that CT. Oh, what? Out of nowhere, X7 right through the smoke, a headshot deploys on towards Glyph. And now there's a chance to win this overall. It was looking down and out, but Zipex, of course he'll win it. The 1v1 goes his way a 4k picked up but x7 oh my god nearly got uh nearly got me going there that was the first one good the second one ridiculous and i kind of felt like if it continued going for the spray he might have got a little lucky there but he waited for a while he tried to play towards the first oranges and Zebex, of course he's going to use everything at his disposal the molotov tossed in and that's going to be the end of x7 but making it uh for a moment there making everyone believe he could potentially have pulled off that clutch 7-4 though, Astralis, they do manage to uh, kind of bounce back here. Two in a row now for Enz. Four rounds on the T-side Inferno. Not going to be quite good enough yet. They still have to decide whether to go for the buy here. They can potentially go for it. 5k, 5.3 on X7. You have uh, the lowest player is Ariel on 3750 and Alu on 3800. So they can go for like maybe a couple of Galils and a little bit of utility. While Sergei and Sunny are going to go for the AKs alongside X7. And it looks like that is indeed going to be the play. Alu and Sergei. And Ariel, in fact, I like the fact that they are committing a little bit more to the utility rather than just going for firepower. It's going to be the two acres and three Galils. However, for Astralis, it's everything, the entire arsenal at their disposal. Well, utility being used up early on from Ents this time. Shoot up towards the top of Banana, trying to really battle Astralis over here, but Astralis, if you watch over the past few demos, even within, I would say, even the last year, maybe two, you'll see the same sort of stuff. It's these three players heading towards top banana early, tossing heaps of utility in towards banana. It's all calculated, it's all positioned correctly, and it's just unstoppable. It's a system they haven't had to change because it works. And well, Ariel is just going to run up in towards a long catch his badges. He did rotate back over towards the archway. He was originally playing over towards B, but this time, Glitter going back in, but it's Sunny with a headshot. And now Ents hold the advantage, and they're going to be running back over towards B. There's a huge weakness here. They understand Glaive is the player that's usually over on that B bomb side. So when he gets that kill over towards A, that's information that the B bomb side is probably weak here, if not empty. Uh, Sunny's walked on past. Sunny's walked on past, and Zephyr might be caught up with a smoke, but he still manages to recover. Oh, Looking wow. for more, gets the double, and he stays alive in 10 HP. Dupree's unaware where Sunny is, but Sunny has to strike. He's got to go for the kill, and that's going to allow Dupree to get the kill. It's all in X7 again, Dinko in a 1v3. X7, 1 versus 3 to try and make it happen. He's right in front of the smoke. He'll be heading his way back over towards the banana side. There's just so many players coming in from multiple different positions. You do not envy his position, and Device will get rid of him. A little bit of BM this time coming in from Device. We see some <laughs> of it displayed by Sergei a little early on, and Device is having a field day. Hit four. Astralis will win the half by one at a minimum. And well, Device there with a the Molotov to its library. The second he was smoked off, he tossed in the Molotov at the entrance of Archways, keeping ends at bay. And that allowed the two CDs coming up Arch to get the kills and the trades going their way. And that was such a genius Molotov there. If he hadn't tossed it in, we could have probably seen ends just running into Archway and overwhelming CD spot and potentially just winning the round. So some very, very smart decision-making taking place there, both from uh, Device as well as from uh, good old Zipex over at the B-bomb side. Zipex does most of the work there. That, that, that's huge from him. The, finding those kills, stopping that attack coming forward while Magis doing a good job and starting takes off the spray, catching Sunny as well. Oh, and this is not the start you'd be looking for. They're just not having any success in towards Banana. This is horrible. And Zipex had a knife in his hand. Was that a smoke? Doesn't matter. He pulls the rifle at the right time anyway. Catches out Alu. And X7 and Aerial. Well, 2v5. Yeah, this this round's done already. It's surely gonna take a monumental performance out of these two players to even get somewhat close at taking a few players down here for Astralis. Never mind winning the round. And while Device is gonna catch Ariel, looked away at the wrong time for a second, but he's able to react fast enough and take down Ariel as he emerges from the boiler.
But now again, at X7, this time 1v5, and it's just not going to happen. Device peeks down in towards mid. 9-4, feels like Astralis are, are starting to get that machine going. It was, uh, it was misfiring a few of the cylinders in the previous map, but it seems to be fixed. They've got to the mechanics, and Astralis are right back to, to being a machine. And Well, Device certainly is a machine himself. Oh, he's a machine, and uh, Zephyx is a beast. 14-4 to 4 for the man. Well... Not usually, well, we all know, I think everyone on the planet is aware of his uh, clutching uh, prowess, but not really known for being usually on top of the scoreboard. And right now, he is just beasting on this map. And a fast play being set here towards mid, and Device, he thinks second of it. That's a lovely nade, that's a beautiful nade. Oh, look oh at the damage, God. look at the damage. <laughs> Nades and 5-7s galore. Finally, Ariel does the flyback, Dupree switch mode of 50 50 he's gonna get the kill. And a fast pace being set there by Ents, but the nade just doing so much off damage. Dupree has all the time in the world to pick up the third. <laughs> That's lovely. I love that from Dupree. But 10-4, we head into the last round of the half. It's Astralis, double figures reached already. Ents not really doing much here on the T side of Inferno. They've been running into a brick wall, and Astralis just, uh, they just do not hesitate to, to shut them down time and time again. Ends with a buy. It's going to be the alt for Alu. The utility is somewhat limited on him, but the rest of his team, they've got plenty of utility. So, goodbye. Lee's coming in here from Ents towards the end. We'll see if it's enough to master a fifth round, but they desperately need this. I think, obviously, 10-5 is much, much better than four rounds. Oh, absolutely. These are one of the, the round differences where just a one round can make such a big difference, right? It gives you that little bit of extra space to work with, extra room to work with. And a device continuing his reign of terror. I just want to point out, the previous round, most operas, many operas we know, when they realize that multiple T's are running up mid, they're going to be tempted to take that shot, right? You might get a collateral, might get a highlight moment. Device, he doesn't have any of it. He just immediately switches over to his nade, tosses it in, and of course gets that kill. Dupree replying back. Avenging his fallen teammate, the aerial sneaking out. He can get a kill here. He finds Majisk. Now they know only one player on the A bombs that is Dupree, and he's all alone, trapped in the corner. But he's gonna find both. He's looking for the third, and he's gonna get. Welcome back to ESL One Road to Rio. It's the last half of the day. It's Astralis versus Ents, and well, if Astralis can overcome some of their pistol woes, which have been evident across the board. Ents have been very solid. Well, they might just close this half very quickly, but it's Alu off to a great start. Glaive hitting the deck, and Alu coming back in for more. This is looking so, so dire. All the kills coming through. It's going to be a 4v2. Well, make that a 1v4. Zipex left alone, and he is a clutch minister after all, but this might be too much of a tall ask for him. Sergey, to end him with a little bit of a love tap from the 5-7. Have Ents won every yes, pistol round so sure far? They have. In all the maps. That is insane. Did Astralis win the second on train? The second half pistol? Perhaps. Okay, maybe. But Ents have won at least five out of six here. Yeah. That's insane. But that that, that is nutty uh, from from Ents. And yeah, you could say Astralis might be weak in the pistols, but Ents also are pretty strong. They have good ideas coming into it. They're good recoveries. Alu seems to just be an absolute god in the pistol. I'm always just seeing his name pop up in the kill feed. He's doing great stuff. And the pistol is obviously very important here, especially since they only managed four rounds in the entire half. So time to show up. Time to get that momentum going on the CT affair. I like that Astralis didn't force buy, even though they have plenty of rounds to, to play with. That's the exact reason why they don't go for the force buy. They don't. They have no real need to. You can let Ents have a few of these rounds. It's just about getting those rifles out early. First niche place. It doesn't matter how you win, honestly, but that is the uh, name of the game. Sergey is going to find Dupree, and like you said, full eco. They're just probably wasting time here, just trying to potentially figure out what the setups might be for Ents on this anti eco. And for Ents, uh, MAC 10s, UMP. It's going to be a field day, just farming a little bit of cash as Aldo is going to chime in a fragment. So it's going to be a pretty comfortable mob up here coming in for Ents, and they're going to get around number six. However, the body coming in from Astralis, it's going to be AKs and Kevlar and whatnot, and that means that the fact that they have these SMGs could be a little bit of a problem for Ents. So expect a little bit of aggression from Ents, especially towards Banana area. They're going to try and take these close quarter battles, or even might be towards an apartment stack coming out with the with the MP9s and the UMP. Something a little bit different from uh, the usual default setups you might be expecting on the CT side. So, a little something funny. So I tried to fix the few model issues. And it's actually just got rid of pretty much everyone's view model. So no one has a gun right now. Uh, that, sh that will be fixed as soon as possible, ladies and gentlemen. So as, so as soon as we have uh, a, a time to, to fix that on over, we'll try and get it fixed. But uh, mo oh, most people don't even have a gun. <laughs> yeah, hopefully during the attack timeout or something. But 
Well, there you have it. Uh, we have the aggression coming out. This is lovely for Mans. This is exactly what they needed to do. In fact, they went for both of it. They went for the banana aggression, Dinko, and they also went for the aggression towards apartments. That was risky from Sunny there. If he got taken down, that would have been the B-bomb site uh, compromise, but he survives, and uh, he's got backups well arriving in the form of Alu, and that is a lovely world for Mans. They had the SMGs, and they went for the close quarter battles, especially towards apartments and towards banana, and they make it work, and it is now a 2v5. Favoring the finish side, but Majisk finds one. Well, Flash goes up and trying to make their way in towards the site. There's 55 seconds in play. Ents are going to be rotating players over towards the B bomb side, but the bomb's actually still in second middle. Sunny catches Majisk just sprinting on towards the B site, takes him down easily, and now it's only Device with an AK in his hands. Not looking like this is going to be too fruitful for device. We'll walk up towards top middle, clearing a few of the corners here, but. And we should be looking at a relatively clean round from Ents. A little bit limiting the casualties, and that's exactly what will happen. They keep four players alive, device falls, and well, back to another low buy here for Astralis. Looking at eight rounds here for Ents. Should be eight rounds, and slowly but surely, they are starting to. Reduce the uh, the deficit they find themselves in. And for those of you probably tuning in right now wondering why this game is so very important for the side of Ents, uh, Stral is sitting pretty much on top of the leaderboards for the group, but Ents, it's a must win. They need to win this game in order to ensure that they qualify out from the group stage. And right now, Stral is with the four round lead. Should shortly be just a three round lead as long as ends play this one correctly the plane is rough pretty passively and alice should be careful of not getting taken down they're pushing up but the off is not going to get the second kill he gets taken down but sorgi replies back leaving it all on glaive with the off to make something happen he gets plucked as well and device left alone in a 1v4 he's got the deagle but uh it's gonna be it's gonna be a little hard Well, device now, the last remaining player. He'll be on 25 HP, order of his health, and set back in towards second middle. Back towards bottom mid now. Ents just swarming the bomb, and device is just hoping that he can find something. Just a kill or two. Just one would be a bonus. Anything he grabs here, certainly a bonus. But Ents just covering off the. Bomb, Device not getting anything, he's eventually going to walk into the lion's den, but look at this crossfire. Have you ever seen anything more deadly? This is just not going to work. Sunny does <laughs> shut down Device, and there's an 8th round for Ents. I love how they're not taking any liberties, right? That's something... The way Ents are playing that, you just see the amount of effort they're putting in. Even when they're 4v1 against Device, and he's on 25 HP with a pistol only. When you see this kind of stuff come out from the EU teams... And then you see what we've seen earlier in the CIS matchups. <laughs> it is unbelievable listen, listen, the not, juxtaposition. Let's not, <laughs> let's not talk about that. Please. I mean, this listen, is reminding this game, you of that scary time. This game has erased the memories <laughs> of that game we cast earlier today. And let's keep it like that. X7. Domed by the nades. 18 HP. That's a lot of damage being inflicted early on. Astralis now with a buy. They've played this very, uh, in a very orthodox fashion so far, like you mentioned. Before. You pointed out how they haven't really taken much liberties with the Force Buys despite having the lead. And uh, that's just them allowing some of the, the freedom to work with more utility, the better weaponry, and ensuring that if they're going to play around, they want to make sure they have everything in the kitty to make it work instead of just having to rely on like half buys, and, you know, kind of like scuff buys where you might have a few guns, but utility is not great, or you have the utility, but you have to make do with the UMPs, the MAC-10s, and the Galil. So looking pretty good right now for Ents, though. Even the Spidex 7 being down to 18 HP. You see the hit coming in towards brackets. Dupree and Glay find themselves an empty uh, part of the map. The nade, though, sailing in from Aerial. Does a little bit of chip damage on Dupree, not too much, though. And now Sunny pushing up. The flashbang is good. He finds device. That is massive. Trade doesn't take place. Magist is going to come out, but Sunny. Firepower indeed. Finds two. Tries to go for the third, but the effects not able to get the kill. This is huge from Sunny. He's done his job. He might gonna, he's going to get taken down here by Glaive, but that's okay. As Alu's going to find Dupree. It's all in Glaive. The captain in a 1v4. I don't think there's anything he can do from this point. 
No, and this is kind of scary now for Australia. They haven't won a single half in the second half. They haven't even looked close. This is just beautiful Seattle cements coming through on the CT side, and I'm loving it. This is the type of performance I wanted to see from them coming into this. I didn't want them to lie down and die and let Astralis just walk over the top of them. This is a good fight being presented, and Sunny getting the three in towards Banana. That's perfect. 15 and 14. Put some positive in terms of KD. And now Astralis starting to feel the pressure a little bit. Maybe not just at this point. They're not too scared, but they're likely to lose this round completely. Then we're 11 10. And that's when, you know, that scoreline is is gone, right? That that indomitable lead, that huge buffer we've seen Astralis have is completely out the window. And also, not, not just about the rounds, if you look at the money, the money is so good for Enter. And we spoke about this with uh, for Astralis earlier on, but uh, definitely looking very good for Enz. So far, Sunny will make his escape. That was scary for Sunny. He was at the bottom of a banana. There was no one over to the B bomb site, although... Seven has made his way there. Nice little nade combo there. Sunny finds the effect and Molotov to keep them at bay, but Majisk at range finds the kill. Now we know Sunny's all alone. Rotation is taking place now, but the flames are going to dissipate very, very quickly. Alu, his spider sense tingling. You know someone's around mid. As Sunny goes for the spray, he gets dinged, but doesn't matter. One HP, he stays alive, and he's going to find one more lovely world from Sunny. And it's all on Dupree. Although it was just the pistol investment. That's a nice hold indeed coming out from... Sunny, 1 HP, he stays alive, they haven't lost, just losing the one player, and a bomb dropped on the side, there's nothing Dupree can do, and it is going to be round number 10, double digits, coming in for Enz. Well, 11-10, there's the scoreline that's uh, starting to look pretty scary now for Astralis. I've got the AKs in, in the purchase here, but they haven't won a single round here in the second half. And this is the time to change it. They have to get it under their belt. Otherwise, Ents, even the scoreline, the momentum is completely on their side. And while Astralis, they'll see anything can get done. It's going to be the nade going up, X7. Oh, he's going to do a lot of damage. That nade actually dropping device to 32, Magus to 56. Astralis are getting a taste of their own medicine. Oh yeah, this is basically, yeah, and basically replying back to Astralis and telling them what you can do. We can do better. Device Magisk already low without having spotted a single fin. This is, this is indomitable for men. Six rounds in a row on the CD side, and in each and every one of these row, rounds, we mentioned this earlier on the first half, Astralis haven't got the bomb down even once, Dinko. And that's a very scary proposition. That means they've not been able to get their way into the sites here. And look at this setup. Surrogate from above finds Dupree. Despite the missed shot from Alu. Well, it's Device, the front man. Looking for the shot. It's going to be X7 gone. He's going to be looking for a tad more, but... At the back of the bomb site, the boost is going to be the main position the device needs to worry about. He's going to check it. Sunny taking off. And oh no. Ents have lost every pillar of support in this B bomb site. And now Alu trying to get involved. It's going to be a nice quick shot as he takes down device. Running back into the site, looking for the shots as Zipex gets towards the back lines. Going to be the Molotov heading in towards New Box to try and clear the spot, but Zipex up on top of the boost. This is uh, a good setup for him and Glaive. It's going to be difficult to try and take away. Glaive gets an easy call to Alu. Zipex taking down Ariel. And now it's only Sergei. A 1v3 retake for the young Finn. And it's just not looking like a real possibility here for him. It's going to be shut down and Glaive will make it happen. 12 to 11. Astralis finally went around in the second half. It took a while. It took a long while. One play. Okay, device. Okay. Shift delete on Alu. <laughs> Well, easy kill towards top middle. Device able to pick that up, and now he'll move forward. Ariel around the corner. To be shutting him down. Sergey coming in. Dupree picked off. Now this is good for Astralis. A man advantage. They'll be looking solid. Device is going to catch X7. And now, well, Device swinging out into the open. It's Sergey in the middle of the site. Device taking him down. Now it's only Sunny. A 1v4, and this is the kind of run that you expect from Astralis. Device just showing up, getting a 4k, taking everyone down, and he wants the ace as he moves forward, but Sunny's going to deny it in the most oh. embarrassing fashion. <laughs> the knife kill coming in, and, well, that's kind of anticlimactic for Device. But still a brilliant round nonetheless. Four big kills. Wins the round single-handedly for Astralis, and now Sunny having to save on the other end of the map. 
yeah, but but device, my word. Single-handedly, just pretty much opening up towards mid, the one-tap deletion of Alu. And then just uh, continue to push ahead and just completely dismantle the A-bomb side. Yeah, Sunny does get the uh, the constellation shank between his shoulder blades, but that's not going to be enough. And it's going to be 13 to 10. Astralis inch closer. Round of 16. And how does it finally stop, Dinko? This... Uh, this train from ends, stringing so many rounds together in what has looked like such a beautiful CD side. Astralis finally, they put their foot down, they said no. They seem to be done with this. Just took one uh, one win in the second half, it seems, to get them back into things. But ends, not going to let them out of the woods just yet. They're going to have a buy coming in, it's going to be the AWP for Alu. The rifles for everyone else available. And we'll see what Astralis have up their sleeve. Not the rest of the second half. It's going to be the AKs in play. A warp for a device, but he's shown in the last round he doesn't really need it to have the same sort of impact that you'd expect from him. Just uh, 4k in the last round. And that's the that's a crazy thing. I think that's one of the most important assets of a star player is the fact that they are good on every weapon. They are good in every single situation. Device is good on the pistols. He's an incredible world class opera rifle. You know, he's got everything going his way, but he's gonna disappear again. He's gonna find himself one at a second. Device continuing. Just a meat grind ends. And well, this is looking huge for him. The flash is gonna go up. Another one at the ready to go around the corner. And this is good for Astralis. Continue to run up in towards B. A device has just been the, the key to unlock these rounds for Astralis in the last few rounds now. And Ents haven't really been able to deal with it. And they won't be able to deal with it in this round either. He's forced them to save. They have to go over to the other side, side of the map. In fact, they already started there, but they're not going to be leaving. And it's 14 to 10. He's just been activated, hasn't it? Device has had enough. He's just done with this. He's just tired of losing on the T side. Single-handedly just winning rounds at this point. Previous round, mind you, that was a buy round as well. It just deletes Alu at mid, who had the AWP. It just rushes ahead, almost gets to Ace. It looked like we just might have timed out, so we might have a... A restore? Oh, not a restore, but we might technical have a pause, technical timeout. Technical pause coming in. Maybe that's a time where we could potentially just try and see if uh, the, the gun model might be... Uh, hopefully can be fixed. But Device has had enough, and that is scary. When he starts taking matters in his own hands, and bear in mind, it's not like his teammates are right behind him, helping with pop flashes and whatnot. He's just literally just walking in and taking the duels and plucking heads like chickens. So we're 14 to 10. We will be having a very quick tech timeout, as uh, I do believe Majiska uh, has timed out for now, and it should hopefully be coming back very, very quickly. Yeah, hopefully it is a quick comeback from kills in the past two rounds. And those six kills just netted them uh, very, very convincing uh, wins there. 14 to 10, two remaining in for Ents. Dinko, this is a do or die game. Remember that. This is just a quick reminder. If Ents don't win this, they're out. They're out of the road to Rio. At least this one, this iteration. ESL won Cologne. Sorry, ESL won the road to Rio. Ents needing this win. Astral's on top of the group, though. They're feeling very comfortable alongside uh, NIP. And now, despite showing sparks of life, despite showing that they can hold their own against Astralis, will they fall at the very end, at the finish line, is the question. Well, the Molotov going up in towards Top Banana. It's going to be Magis taking down one. Glaive coming in as well. X7 picked off. And now the charge can come through. Smoke down in towards Spawn. It's going to be Sergei that swings and drops Magis. And now Alu and Ariel. A two versus four. Round 25 is looking good for Astralis to grab map point. To grab series point. While well, Glaive doing damage through the smoke. It's not going to get the kill. But at least does damage on towards Alu. Now Zipex is trying his best for a little bit of smoke antics as well. Alu tosses the Molotov in front of the coffins. It's not going to quite extend enough, unfortunately, to prevent anything from happening. Well, now Ents realize they've got to fall back, but they're falling back into the dangerous arms of Dupree, who wants to take these kills. He's going to find one looking for a second, and that is it. Device, uh, Dupree getting uh, a multi-kill in this round. Device the previous. This is looking absolutely fantastic for Astralis. Everybody's showing up in the last few rounds. And now we are looking down the barrel of an Astralis 2-1 victory over Ents. And again, you do know what it, what is on the line. And Fnatic fans are going to be pretty happy with uh, the current state of affairs at the moment.
Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the score line is for Fnatic though. I'm just gonna take a very quick gander. And uh, Fnatic right now. Oh, they are they're about to lose as well. It's 15 12 to NIP on the final final deciding map. So we might actually see what ends in Fnatic losing here. Swedish Derby not really going the way of JW and his merry men. And Astralis, they just need the one more round. And suddenly they've woken up. They're looking to close this one out. Sunny pushing in, taking matters into his own capable hands as well. He finds two. Sergei chimes in with a couple of frags of his own. And Device is left alone again. But this time, he's in a one versus three. Bomb dropped towards T-spawn. And you can see already Ariel pushing in all the way towards T-spawn. Like seven, just holding back. Device coming towards them. Truly, under aware of this uh, situation, the device can certainly make this work. He's going to go back up through banana, but look at the players coming in from behind as well. It gets increasingly more difficult. He does have a smoke in the double flash, but we have the the luxury of X-ray. We we know where X7 is playing from. Device has no idea. He's going to find him anyway. Headshot picked up. X7 dropped, and now Device is going to sprint for the plant, but it's immediately the flank from Ariel coming through, and it's another round of the board for Ents. They stay afloat. They will not lose today or in this round, should I say? At Astralis, they're going to have a buy coming back in. Device couldn't quite make the hero play work, but now Ents stay afloat. They've got the buy coming back in. Certainly weaknesses, but enough to make it happen. And it's all about keeping the players alive, limiting the casualties and being flawless as you move through the rest of regulation. Just a very quick update as well. It looks like Dignitas have lost to Complexity a while back and Fnatic have just lost to Nip. So for Enz, this was a win condition. They needed Fnatic to lose and they needed to win this one, but they still need to get four in a row, Dinko. Four in a row to force overtime and then try and grind it out. As the Stralis really seem to have had enough. This is looking very dire indeed, but they're pushing in. Sunny just going for the blind spray, but they're taking so much of damage. And Magist with the nade finds X7. It's all an Alu. He's going to fall to Magist. The B bomb side completely bereft of any CD side presence. And Estrada's going to come pushing in. And this could be it, Dinko. This could be the game. And Zupri, he just walks in through the smoke and gets both the kills.